Hello everyone, today I will talk about my project of building a conversational chatbot. This is the outline of our uh, of the project. Uh, I will first talk about the data processing and in this part I will talk about what kind of data we use and uh, what kind of the uh, natural language processing techniques we use. And then we will talk about the model construction, namely the sequence to sequence model and different types of the uh, recurrent neural networks and after that I will talk about our model experiments and last the user interface. Uh, we choose three um, uh, we choose three data sets. The first one is the Cornell Movie Dialogue Corpus. The Cornell Movie Dialogue Corpus uh, has more than 220,000 conversational exchanges between 10,000 pairs of movie characters and the dialogues are mainly extracted from the movie so this is the kind of the movie dialogues and there are pairs of the dialogues produced by the data set so it is easy for us to extract the uh, input and output from the data set the, the second one is the squad data set which refers to the Stanford question answering data set it is a reading comprehension data set consisting of questions posed by crowd workers on a set of Wikipedia articles where the answer to every question is a segment of text or span from the corresponding reading passage or the question might be unanswerable. And the data set is kind of hierarchical. Uh, it contains 442 articles and for each article there are many paragraphs and for each paragraph there is a context and many questions and answers to the uh, to this specific context and we extract the pairs of questions and answers and we do not need the context because what we only want is the pairs of dialogues and some of the questions has no answers and there is a label which is uh, indicate whether it is possible to have the answer to the data set or not and you can see that on the right it is a context of the Beyonce and uh, here is kind of the answers and questions uh, to this specific context and there, this is the symbol of whether it is possible to extract the answers. Um, and this is what we do. We first read the data from the JSON file and we extract the pairs of questions and answers if the flag is impossible or is false. The third data set is the WikiQA data set. Uh, the WikiQA corpus is a new publicly available set of questions and sentence pairs collected and annotated for research on open domain questions. And different from the Stanford uh, SQ, squad data set, uh, which is manipulated by the workers, uh, the WikiQA uses the Bing query logs as the question source. Each question is linked to a Wikipedia page that potentially has the answer, which included 3,000 uh, questions and about 30,000 sentences in the data set, where 1,473 sentences were labeled as answer sentences to their corresponding questions and we just choose the questions with the right, right sentences. So you can see that on the right, this is the difference between the uh, wrong answer and the right answer. And there is a number indicate whether this is a right or wrong answers. And we choose the data which has the correct answers. So then we merge the three data set together and then tokenize the data. We control the length of the sentence no longer than 30. This is because that uh, there are many, many sentences which has a uh, very long sentence, very long and like 100, more than 100 words. And some of these sentences, like they are meaningless and it is, they are harmful to our whole model because it's, if we control the sentence like to 100, it will uh, generate so much blank uh, like response. And then we lay, lower the case of each word and we split each word by the punctuations and we also turn the word to the number which is the index index of the uh, the position in the dictionary the total number of the data set is around 200 uh, it is around 22,000 uh, 227,000 sorry uh, the total vocabulary is around 42,000 This is our model design. Basically, the most significant framework we use is the sequence-to-sequence -sequence model with different RN techniques. As for the RN, we use LSTM as our base model, 
We also try different structures like the bi bidirectional LSTM, the GRU, and the attention mechanism. We analyze the structure of models by different parts. As for the optimizer, we have tried ADAM and RMS PLP. And for each optimizer, we try different learning rate, and it turns out that the RMS PROP has a better effect than Adam. For the LSTM model, we analyze the model with different hidden layers as well as the learning rate, and we also try different batch size in the training step. And for the metric, we use the cross entropy arrow as the objective function, and the, the blue, which is the bilingual evaluation and the study score, for the metric we evaluate the model. We use 80% of the data as the training data and 20% of the data as the uh, test data to test the uh, validation uh, error of the blue score. And we also tried character model, but the effect is not so ideal. This is the sequence to sequence model. Um, it is first uh, first invented by Cho as a scholar in 2014. And the, the function of the sequence to sequence model is basically mapping between the variable length input and to another variable length output. Uh, and its original purpose is using the area of the machine translation. However, the conversational modeling can also directly benefit from the sequence to sequence model because it also has a query and a response structure. So basically, uh, the task of the encoder network is to understand the input sentence and create a smaller dimension dimensional representation of it. This represent, representation is then feed forward uh, to a decoder network which generates a sequence of its own uh, response to the output. Here is an example. You can see that in the image given above, uh, the input sentences are you free tomorrow. So when search and input, se input sequences pass through the encoder-decoder network consisting of your STM blocks, uh, or other kind of RN blocks, the decoder generates words one by one in each time step of the decoder's iteration. After one whole iteration, the output sequence generated is yes, what's up? This is the structure of the sequence to sequence model. Here, H stands for the hidden, hidden layer units, and C is kind of the context vector, it's all, and it is also kind of a thought vector. Uh, and so here, F and G is the uh, RNs, which can be the RSTM or the kind of the RNs. The objective function is the cross entropy loss. Uh, here is the sequence to sequence prediction. We use the greedy search mechanism. Uh, for any input x, given x, find word y0 with highest probability using RN. Given y0 and x, we find the word y1 with highest probability using RN. And then we stop when we see the end of sentence token. So let me talk about the model, the LSTM. It stands for Long Short-Term Memory, which is, which is a special design of RN and is widely used and adapted. So why do we use LSTM? The RN has a problem of the gradient vanishing and the gradient exploding, which means that in the, uh, in the processing of the backpropagation, the gradient may be uh, vanished or may be too large. LSTM are exp explicitly designed to avoid the long-term dependency problems. Remembering information for long periods of time is practically their default behavior, not something they struggle, they struggle to learn. Because LSTM has a very special design, it has three gates, the input gate, output gate, and the forget, and, uh, forget gate. The cell remembers values over arbitrary time intervals, and the three gates regulate the flow of the information in and out of the cell. Now, STM needs a large amount of parameters, so it takes more time and more cost to train model compared to the uh, vanilla RN. And LSTM is also very flexible and have many other kind of uh, different structures and improvements like the GRU or the bidirectional graph. This is kind of the structure, the model structure we use uh, of the encoder and decoder systems and using the, R the LSTM. You can see that uh, as for the encoder layer, there is an uh, embedding layer, input layer, and an uh, LSTM layer. And for decoder layer, there is an uh, uh, LSTM layer and a dense layer, which, which is a kind of a fully connected layer to predict the probability of the output. Uh, let me tell you about something about the bidirectional LSTM. The bidirectional recurrent neural networks connect two hidden layers of opposite directions to the same output. 
With this form of the generative deep learning, the output layer can get information from past and future states simultaneously. By using the two time directions, the input information from the past and the future of the current time frame can be used, unlike the standard RN, which requires the, de the delays for including future information. So here is a kind of example. Suppose we want to predict Y2, we need to predict both A2 and A2 prime. And uh, use, uh, predicting A2 uses A1, which is the previous uh, information. This, this is not so much different from the traditional RN. However, A2 prime is the kind of using the information of A3 prime, which is the future information. And then we concatenate concat these two layers to get uh, the output Y2. This is the uh, uh, code uh, using carrots in the by the uh, in the uh, building the bidirectional LS, LSTM. Another important feature in our model is the attention mechanism. So suppose uh, the the attention mechanism is important because it is kind of a mapping through the sentence, and each sentence have different kind of the weights, um, indicating uh, the response uh, indicating the response. So our goal is to get the attention weight alpha tj in order to compute st, which is the uh, output, uh, which is the hidden state in the output layer, and also get the get the output yt. So the algorithm goes like that. Firstly, we get the hidden state h from the RN structure, and secondly, suppose the hidden state of the current decoder is st plus minus one. We need to calculate et, which is uh, through us through our a is a function of the simple uh, you can see you can treat a like the single layer neural network uh, and then we get attention by a softmax function alpha tj after that we get the context vector through a summation of the alpha finally we can compute the hidden state of the next time in the decoder and the output and the, also the output we also use the there is a par package in Keras called self-attention. We use this kind of package to build our attention mechanism. Uh, then I will talk about something about the, the, our model experiments. We tune different kind of the parameters, the batch size, the hidden units, the learning rate, and also the dropout rate in the uh, LSTM. Here is uh, a function between of the batch size and the, the validation loss. You can see that with the batch size increasing, the loss also increase. This is the type of this is the on the left is the function of learning rate to the loss. You can see that with the increasing the learning rate, the loss decreases dramatically, and however the training time increases dramatically. Uh, it and this is. Is also similar to the batch size means uh, the more you want to learn or the, the more you want to compute the slower you are and the uh, lower accuracy you may receive this is the drop rate uh, however the drop rate is kind of more arbitrary uh, and the best parameters we got from the dropout rate is 0 0.5 uh, however, with the increasing the dropout rate, the training time increased a lot. This is the hidden units. Also, with the increasing of the hidden units, uh, the training time increase and the loss decrease. This is a uh, brief summary about the parameters to the uh, function of the uh, validation loss. We can see that with uh, the the vocabulary size and length of sentence also has an important uh, function to the training loss. This is the model comparison between different types of RNs. We compared LSTM and LSTM with and without attention, uh, and bidirectional LSTM with and without attention, and simply GRU. We can see that uh, for, the, for the blue score, which is the bilingual evaluation the study, a metric to uh, evaluate the performance. We can see that the bidirectional LSTM with attention has the best for performance, but it is still not so ideal, so we need to improve our model in our future work. And it still needs a long 
training time. And in this comparison, we choose the epochs to be 10, and the length of the sentence is 30, and the vocabulary in the dictionary is 15,000. The units in each layer is 256. So, as a brief summary, as for the hyperparameters of the data structure, the vocabulary size ma matters a lot. Since the larger the vocabulary size, the longer time the training process may take, because the imb embedding dimension will be larger. Plus, less unknown words will be generated and the model will predict less unknown words. For the structure of the model, the bidirectional LSTM with attention is the best model. However, the parameters amount is much more than the basic model. Uh, you can use the more advanced GPU to to solve this problem be, uh, because uh, we use our GPU on the Google Colab and it is not so uh, advanced GPU and the training process takes a very long time. As for the optimization function, the RMS PROP is much quicker than the Atom and the results does not differ a lot. Uh, as for the epochs, epochs seems not so critical to our model and sometimes additional epochs can make the performance even worse. For our model, the best epochs uh, with the minimum validation loss is around 8. We also try to build a new model which is the character model. Uh, which The character model means instead of predicting each word, we predict the, the next character it will exist. The, the advantage of the character model is that it eliminates the vocabulary size only to the character size which reduces like 40,000 to no more than 100. This is a dramatic uh, increase in the training process. However, the disadvantage is also very obvious, obvious since we have less accurate of dimension to presenting the word meaning. Uh, the word performance will, will dramatically decrease. It is not as good as the word model since it can only produce the meaning of the character. And the model may also generate some words which we have never seen before. Um, in the processing of the character model, we find that there are also some characters which is not English characters. So we eliminate all the characters and only we preserve the English character. This is kind of the results of the state of art model. The, uh, the model in the left side is our model and uh, the model on the right side is from a paper, a neural com conversational model which is proposed by Google in 2017. And this paper is very popular and their result is like very uh, very good and they generate very frequent sentences. Uh, still our model is co cannot compare to them but we, we have also generated some meaningful response. Uh, like here is the general Q and general knowledge of Q and A. We can see that uh, uh, we we can answer some questions about how many and uh, this or who is these kind of questions. We can generate some uh, connections between the response and the queries. As for the philosophical Q and A, we can generate very good uh, response like what is the purpose of life and what is the purpose of living uh, our, our response is like uh, not so good but it's still very meaningful and it's still like have a right direction connected to the questions um, one drawback of our model is that we generate a lot of unknown words uh, this is because the not so many uh, dimension of the dictionary uh, or the vocabulary size. Uh, we can improve this by uh, improve our model to tr train, mo train mo our model for more uh, advanced GPUs and more high, di high dimensional embedding layers. So here are two very interesting uh, results about our model. Like I'm going to school tomorrow. You are a liar. <laughs> this is very funny. And who is LeBron James? And uh, like it also generates some words like the imperial, uh, like the general uh, is very connected to the LeBron James. Uh, the last part is the user interface. We, we use Flask as our main tool of developing the user interface.
user interface and build the website. Flash is a micro web framework written in Python. It is classified as a framework because it does not require particular tools or libraries. We created a post method to get a message in the HTML file and send the sentence to the function of the prediction of the chatbot. After that, we send the reply back to the HTML again. This is the Python file and this is the HTML file. And let's see the result. This is kind of the framework of the sequence to sequence chatbot. Uh, and and oh, you can this is a website and you can like gen, you can respond to the questions like uh, you, you can chat directly chat to the chatbot. Like if I say how are you it will immediately immediately give you the response. And if I say I love you and it will I'm sorry. <laughs> So thanks to the tools we use, we use the Python, the Google Colab, Kairos, the TensorFlow, uh, Flask, and Google Cloud. Uh, and these are the reference. And that's all. Thank you.